Hey guys, I'm really excited to show you a trade that I put on a couple weeks ago that I just hit perfectly. I mean, I nailed it. And it feels good when, it feels so good when you do that. It's kind of like hitting a good shot in golf or something, which I don't hit many of. And I want to show it to you. Let's do some technical analysis. This is a classic cup with high handle. <clears throat> and we've got some fractals. We got some patterns and patterns. Kind of double bottom. We got a head and shoulders continuation pattern. Let's look at the fundamentals. Let's talk about my process. Let's talk about where I put the stop. And if you make it all the way to the end of the video, let's spend 30 seconds talking about the general market, which is dicey. And yeah, um, this is just for entertainment um, and for education. I'm not a financial advisor. I have been investing since 1996, marking up charts. I used to print them off with the printer and use my um, highlighters and Sharpies. I kind of miss doing that actually, but no, I do it all on computer. And the one thing I ask of you, if you like the video, please like the video. So this is Fix Comfort Systems. What the heck is that? Uh, we'll get to it in a minute. In a minute. Now, uh, a lot of you guys, you just buy based on the story. You hear the story of Palantir and how great it's going to be, so you buy it. Or you hear, you know, Amazon's a big company making lots of money, so you just buy it. And that is, oh, what is this? Ready driver, forget it. Um, that is not how you become a successful investor. Another common mistake is people buy off the fundamentals. Oh, look at this. Triple digit sales, triple digit earnings. I'm buying this thing before it goes higher. Well, guess what? Stocks often have outstanding um, fundamentals at the top and they start going down and they keep going down when they have really good fundamentals. So don't buy off the fundamentals either. What you should do is sort your charts by strength of the chart, find strong charts, and then look at the fundamentals. And then when the two align, when you have strong fundamentals and a strong chart, then that's when you buy the thing, right? What if you have a strong chart and poor fundamentals? Well, guess what? The institutions know something that you don't. And it'll become apparent eventually. What you do is you buy it anyway. You just don't buy as big of a size as you do if, they, if it has strong fundamentals. And of course, as always, you do um, risk control. Look and make sure earnings aren't coming out soon. Make sure that there's not a product announcement, etc. So I saw this chart. I saw um, a nice uptrend, nice cup with handle, which we'll get to in a minute. So then I pulled up the fundamentals. Let's take a quick look. Fix comfort systems. One thing I like about this stock, it's boring. Heating, ventilation, and air conditioning services. That's not very um, glamorous, is it? But that's what you want. You don't want a crowded trade like Palantir, where everyone and his grandma is excited about the stock. You want a stock that very few people know about. You build a position, and then people gradually discover it because it's going up. So uh, I like to look at three metrics, earnings, sales, and gross margin. And as you can see, um, earnings are growing. This is the four quarters, the previous four quarters. We've got 5%, 25, 30, 31, 31% growth. That's pretty darn good. And we've got sales, 22, 32, 43, 34. A little bit of a dip last quarter, but hey, um, last quarter, the economy was terrible, right? 34% sales. That's pretty good. And gross margins, 19, 18, 17.3, 17.2. That's going backwards. We want to see them um, have a higher percentage profit on their services, not a lower. But again, the economy was terrible last quarter, so let's give them some grace. Here's what else I like. 2021 to 22 um, jumps from about $4 a share to almost $5 a share. Then the estimate for 23 is up another dollar or so. That's a big jump. That's all I need to look at. Um, I don't look at a bunch of ratios and this and that. That's all we need to look at. Oh, one other thing, relative strength. The strength of the chart versus the entire market. 96, it's beating 96% of stocks. And here's the S&P 500. It's going down. This stock's going up. Okay, sounds good to me. So let's mark up the chart. So I was on MarketSmith, and this is stockcharts.com. 
the stock the charts on stockcharts.com are prettier and the annotation tools are awesome i've got a, a link in the description below if you are interested and nowadays you know i mostly just mark these up in my head i don't even take the time to draw all the lines and such but it's kind of fun when you have time it's fun when you have time i find it kind of um zen like it's kind of relaxing for me and i think you'll find it instructive if you are new to technical analysis so the first thing we want is a prior uptrend and actually let's zoom out 10-year chart pretty good looking 10-year chart all right the stock has been in an uptrend we got that prior uptrend and so here we have an extended base during this miserable market that has been 2022 and we've got this is a double bottom you've got this is an eve and eve bottom there's adam and eve there's even adams adam and adams this is from thomas bolkowski um and shakeouts are good see this shakeout this shook out a lot of a lot of a lot of i almost said suckers that's not nice um a lot of unfortunate investors bought up here only to see it roll over we're holding on and we're holding on and got shaken out when it broke beneath <clears throat> sorry the 200 day and here it made the other side of its uh, double bottom now technically you want this side to be lower than this side which it was except for that shakeout day these vertical lines are i i just marked the earnings for you and i'll explain why in a minute i always do that on my charts by the way it's instructive look at this wicked shakeout they must have announced i don't know i don't know the fundamentals very well on this stock but something bad happened usually um when you get a huge gap down like this you you get a dead cat bounce and then it continues back down but the fact that it bounced like a tennis ball and kept bouncing up is very um promising it's very bullish so then we think about getting in now in hindsight a good spot to get in would be right here but um what's called the low cheat but that's not even really a cheat it really needs to start the right side a little bit or at least build out more of a handle here here we just have a little pause pivot of three days two days that that obviously worked but the results don't justify the means that would have been risky now here's the thing do you know about symmetry it's pretty um it's pretty basic basically sorry <laughs> it's basic basically um you want the left side of the chart to be symmetrical with the right side of the chart and that's not symmetrical at all this side goes straight up that's called compression when you get compression like that you got to pay the piper and um it needs more time to for the price to do some work and one of two things will happen it either goes straight up straight down and then zags back up or in this case it slides sideways for quite a while and digests so let's draw in our our the lip of our cup and this is an art not a science but maybe we put it right about there you could make a case for putting it down there where all the closes are but let's put it right there let's make that a little wider all right and we got a big volume breakout and then we have um this is a messy handle you want to see a handle that's nice and tight um but this handle is not and it's because the market has been so jekyll and hyde the last couple months right so most charts are really messy in september to october this would have been a really risky buy because of the time compression here and then it pulled back not a lot but uh, i might have gotten sucked into buying right here at 105 um and then probably would have gotten shaken out because i never do a stop of more than 10 percent. well sometimes i'll do half at five and half at 15. so if i had bought that oh look at that i'd still be in awesome but that's not where i bought it so you could have bought it there um then it came back down retested this is the hold on a second i took some of those moving averages on off of here i just like having the the simple 50-day moving average the simple 200-day moving average 
And I like the exponential moving average too when things go parabolic, but we're not talking about that right now. So anyway, we had this pullback, we had some, now this is called a fractal, pattern within a pattern. So you got a cup, you got a handle, you've got a double bottom within the cup, that's a fractal. And here you've got a little head and shoulders continuation pattern. You've got a shoulder, you got a head, you got a shoulder. So one would be tempted um, to buy here and you'd still be in. One would also be tempted to buy here, but uh, I don't really like gaps like this. Um, I know they work sometimes. Sometimes they, uh, they can function as a breakout gap, but it seems like more often than not, well, it depends on the market. In a weak market like right now, they almost always fill, and sure enough. But so when I bought this thing, see this bullish engulfing day? And the volume was good. See the volume? A bullish engulfing day is really, um, well, it's bullish. If the price goes way down, closes very strongly, it engulfs the prior candles, it says that um, buyers are loading up. And then when it confirms by moving above the previous that candle, that's when you bought it. So I bought it right here on October 14th. I was not happy to finish the day in the red. And I put my stop. All right, I just wanted to get my measuring tool out. So because this market is so um, lousy, I put my stop right beneath this bullish engulfing candle, about a six and a half percent stop. Now, if I had on, if this was a stronger market, I'd probably give it more leash and give it maybe a full 10% stop down here at 94 or so. That's the opposite. I think a lot of people um, do the opposite. Oh, the market is really volatile, so I'm gonna put a really big stop. But that's what you don't wanna do because it'll come down and chop, chop you out at 10% then go back up. If you're going to get stopped out, get stopped out for a paper cut. But um, my thesis was that this bullish engulfing candle was going to mark a reversal, and therefore we didn't need a small, we didn't need a big stop, a big percentage stop. All right, so what happened next? Gapped out a little bit, pulled back, um, broke out of this little continuation pattern. Now, I would have loved to see a handle here like so if it could have built out a handle going into earnings that would have been perfect but but it didn't broke out big on earnings it was up 10 percent at one point and uh, finished the day up eight percent now what did I do well 15 years ago I would have been like oh my gosh this stock is going to the moon I'm gonna buy some more and I would have doubled or tripled my position way up here at 120 instead uh, what I did is what the pros do. I sold into strength. Now, I didn't sell the whole thing, but I sold half of my shares, took a nice profit, took a profit of about 14% in two weeks, and then I moved my stop up to my purchase price. So my stop was, um, hold on a second. Here's my stop down here at like 97. So then I moved it up to my purchase price right there at about 103 104 and now I'm free rolling right I got I got 14 percent of wiggle room if this stock sells all the way down now to my purchase point that's really a bad sign that tells me that this breakout is retail buyers not the mutual funds which is what we want but because this is such a tall um, volume bar that's a good indication that it's institutions, but we won't know that. Now what we wanna see is multiple days of big volume buying. So if I, I held this cause I had a little cushion going into earnings. If you don't have a cushion of about 5%, um, you really should sell before earnings, which really sucks when it gaps up. But uh, you gotta think risk, risk first. If you don't sell, at least reduce down to a very small position. So I had a cushion, and then the other thing that gave me confidence is the previous quarter, it had a big breakout on earnings. So I was, uh, you know, history doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. 
as they say. Now, I think that's the end of my uh, dissection of fixed comfort systems, but I'm not quite done with the video. Yeah, now we'll just see what happens. We'll see, it's probably gonna get pulled down a little bit with the weight of the market. Now, if it, do not buy it up here. It is, do not FOMO into this thing right now. It is way too extended. If it pulls back to 110, 108, maybe even 102, which is the lip line, the lip line, the top of the lip, I don't know, and bounces hard, back up strongly, then you can do what's called a pullback buy. But don't set a buy limit down there. I used to do that um, because sometimes it'll hit your limit and keep running right through or it'll spot like an egg and then break through the other side of the pattern. You'll be stopped out for a big loss. What? You don't use stops? Um, well, ask the people. Uh, where am I going with that? I don't know where I'm going with that. I was going to say, the, ask the people at Facebook or Meta, but you know, uh, a stop wouldn't help very well because they got gapped down on. Now, I think I promised, well, I didn't promise, but I said we'll talk about the general market for 30 seconds. In conclusion, that was a great little trade. I wish my position was bigger, but I'm just still doing really small pilot buys and I'm taking half or full profits right around the 10% mark until we see stocks extending. Once stocks are going, see so in you know, a bull market, um, stocks will break out and go up to 20 or 25% and then form a new base on average. But in a weak market, you're lucky to get 10% before it forms a new base or rolls over and dies. So I'm just gonna keep taking my 10%, five to 10% um, until we see stocks extending again, which could be soon. Now, the general market, so I did a uh, video on the general market not too long ago, so I don't wanna, um, what, repeat myself, but so far it's happening just as uh, we suspected. We had this big bullish engulfing day, like on fix. This is the S&P 500 one year chart, and which signaled a reversal, and then we had our follow through day right here, and it ran up in short order right to the 50 day moving average. Technicians look at the 50 day and the 200 day. When it's going down, it acts as support. When it's going up, when the price is going up, it acts as resistance. Sure enough, we are bouncing off the 50 day. Now it's kind of uh, the moment when the rubber hits the road. We wanna see this slide sideways and break to the upside. We, um, or uh, we will see it maybe roll back down and retest some of this congestion. It's now a lot of this depends. The market's going to be nervous because the um, the Fed is going to make an announcement on Wednesday, November second. I suspect Friday and Monday and Tuesday the market is going to have the jitters. Maybe we'll see some uh, risk-off selling going into that meeting, and then I hate to say it, but the fundamentals, the um, words of the Fed are going to trump the fundamentals and. If he gives us a little dovish statement or does something more dovish than we expect, then the um, S&P 500 and the other indexes are going to blow right through the 50-day like it's not even there. If he stays hawkish, we might be looking at a retest of 3,600 to 3,500. That's it. I'm worn out. It's been a long day. Let me know your comments on fix. Uh, you might be able to get, I, I'm going to add to it if when I can, if I can. Don't buy it tomorrow. It's not ready yet. We'll do what you want. It's your money, but I'm not buying it tomorrow. Let me know your thoughts and comments. Consider subscribing. Have a great day, everybody.